Dearest listener, hello and welcome to day six of my YouTube misadventures. You might be wondering where day five was. <laughs> that is a great question, which warrants its own video, which is what we're doing right now. The last week of my life has been spent searching for a car for my mom, with her, of course, which had taken up pretty much all of my free time besides YouTube, and boy, was it an experience. I don't have a ton to say, but I think I have enough to say, so let me explain to you why it was the most painful experience of my recent life besides living with a selfish, narcissistic international student I will not name who made my life a living hell. If you know, you know. Okay, so it wasn't that bad, but it was bad enough to warrant a video, so sit back, get yourself a drink as we discuss my experience shopping for a car with my mother as a Gen Z with no license. Note to self, for future reference, make shorter titles. But first, here is a look at my stinky man, Tim Tim. And yes, that is his legal name. Tim is a very stinky man who likes to nap and does not like the cat, of whom I will show eventually on this channel. Cuteness out of the way. Let's move on to the car stuff, I guess, if we have to. Okay, so our misadventure started last weekend, not the weekend that just happened, the one before that. We went to the first dealership because me and my mom are really interested in this one car, the 2024 Hyundai Santa Fe. It's a really cool car. Regardless, we met a really nice salesperson who gave us a lot of information and helped us start our search. We'll, we shall call him Rodolfo, because that is really the first name that came to mind, and it's also not his name. Okay, so we leave the dealership that day having test driven a really cool car that had an electric gear shift that, where the ignition was, and it really freaked my mom out but the car was cool. Um, we had a couple of great options to start out with, and we met a decently cool guy who did not try to force us to buy a car day one. That was pretty much a win for us, so we went home and my mom started looking around the area to see what was around. She then started making appointments, and let me tell you, if we actually went to all of them, I would have actually lost my shit dealing with that many people and waiting for so many minutes. I'm usually a very patient person. I'm a middle child, I don't exactly have a choice, but this tested my patience. For a few days, my mom narrowed down her list, a list we had been accruing for about a few months of cars we thought would be a really good fit for her. The car she had before, because spoiler alert, she did end up buying a car, was a 2019 Nissan Altima, which had gone through it. A few minor accidents, 109,000 miles, two kids in college, and a daily commute of 30 to 45 minutes, one way to work, almost six days a week. My mother also has like six herniated discs in her back and has thrown her back out multiple times in the last year. So, uh, so getting into, and by into, I mean crouching down into a sedan, was not happening anymore. She needed an SUV, nothing crazy, but something durable. Now that you're caught up on the background, I think you can understand why my mom was in need of a car, not to mention that because of how much she drives, the list of maintenance that needed to get done on her car was atrocious and we did not have the money for that. Needless to say, the Ultima was given an ultimatum, an, or an ultimatum, ultima, ultima, okay, uh, and it needed to be replaced. A Hyundai would have been a great choice, and this dealership and my guy Rodolfo would come back into the story eventually, but about a week later. We still have a couple days of torture left. My mom is an accountant for a really fancy real estate company on Long Island that I'm not going to mention by name because y'all people on the internet be creeping more than the weekend. Regardless, the point I am making is that in the summer, um, so that their employees can spend more time with their families, every Friday after the 4th of July they get out at 1 o'clock instead of 5 until... Labor Day. Usually, when she gets home, we just hang out or do nothing or go to the store, but this particular Friday, the Friday which happens to be the day I missed an upload, is the one I'm specifically talking about. My mother had an appointment to test drive a car at about 3, I think it was. She got home at around 1.45 because she works far away, and then me and her went out. My sister did not come with us because she legitimately has no patience, mostly because she has ADHD and would rather play Project Sekai with her friends, which is a Japanese Vocaloid game that she's- rhythm game that she's ridiculously good at for no reason. Regardless, we left in the first place my mother decided to go just to see what would happen was an infinity dealer. The nearest one to us is what my mo is in what my mother would refer to as Fufu, as a Fufu neighborhood, meaning rich and snotty like most of Long Island. I kind of rolled my eyes because if you know anything about cars and you know about the hierarchy of prices, an infinity was not cheap. Uh, their cars are phenomenal though, and they are beautiful and drive well. The mother wanted to see if they had something in her price range, so we showed up and we test drove their standard SUV and she liked it. It was really pretty and she literally touched everything and was being like all moms do and trying to embarrass me in public, which I rolled my eyes out and hit her back with a, your mom, as I am literally about to be 21 years old, and she gives me a headache, as everyone else, as it's pretty much anything. So I've had more migraines in the past month than I have had brain cells, I'm pretty sure. For reference, I switched medications and had some really strange side effects. That explains the migraines, but I digress. 
most of the people at this dealership were disgustingly nice to the point where it felt like they would be getting paid significantly better to do so. Fake smiles and all, we test drove the car and then on to the annoying part. People assuming that you're going to buy a car the second you drive it. I get it. This is literally their job. This is all they do. They sell cars. However, trying to run someone's credit score and then immediately trying to ascertain the price of their car they currently drive the second they get out of the car they just rode around the parking lot is a bit much. They did have nice bathrooms though, I say as a person who really hates public restrooms but has to drink a significant amount of water because I have a habit of accidentally dehydrating myself and I have a tiny bladder because I'm kind of a tiny person. <laughs> we were up until this point dealing with a decent salesperson who was actually the lackey of another salesperson my mother had been emailing because they can't show customers the product. No, they're too busy sitting with their feet up in their fancy offices with glass walls and strange modern art of cars and there's Starbucks from the coffee machines in the, in the convenience area. Don't get me wrong, the guy who was showing us around was nice. He just seemed new and like he was being pulled thin because he was. Let's call him Bartholomew. Bartholomew was a pretty okay guy. Respectful, but not rooted enough to sit down with us and figure things out because of factors out of his control. Bartholomew, Bartho, Bartholomew ends up introducing us to another guy to go over the financial part of annoyance. Let's call him Stephen. Stephen ends up being one of the coolest salesperson I have ever met. I have ever met, sorry. Uh, I have sat in a lot of these kinds of rooms with my mother, and I have never felt so comfortable, nor has she talking just about something that causes so much stress money. This guy was a seasoned veteran in the industry, he had owned his own dealership and stepped back to help spend more time with his young kids, which I very much respect. Um, he had well over 10 years dealing with financing and cars and s such and it showed. He was very confident and he was incredibly honest. We explained the budget and that my mother would like a certain car, f that my mother would like a car from this dealership at one point or another and if it couldn't happen now, it wouldn't be the end of the world. Seeing the product firsthand and seeing how it differed from everything else we were looking at was kind of more important. Let's just say Steven got this pretty quickly, and he was not afraid to crack a joke and tell a personal anecdote. It wasn't all business to him, and he was very respectful of us regardless of who we were or where we came from. He was just there to do his job, to give us as much information as possible, and to see if he could come up with something on his end. Meeting him was probably one of the only good parts of this day, so it almost made it worth it. Almost. We spent entirely too long here. So long sitting around stuffy people before we met a genuine one who was, um who was there to be there, not just, you know, to sell a product. He even went out of his way, got us water, showed us where the bathrooms were, and just like basic human decency thing that a lot of people forget. We did have a place to be afterwards. So we wrapped things up here after getting Steven's business card in case something ever came up and made our way to the next place, which was, how do I say, the complete opposite. <laughs> okay, how are we feeling? Do we need another Timmy break? If not, then let's proceed to chapter three, the one that got away. I say that like I named the other sections of this story, but anyways, that just fits this the most. My mom had booked a test drive for a car that had no business being where it was. We were at a Volvo dealer down the street and there was an Audi, an Audi, which was probably like a $60,000 car listed for about 30000 or something like that. It drove beautifully. I mean, it's an Audi. When we got there though, things were just different. <laughs> The dealership was weirdly designed and small, which isn't necessarily a bad thing, it just seemed like they cared a lot more about their seating area than they cared about giving their employees their own individual spaces. The guy who ended up helping us was okay, but took some time to open up. He was kind of like the opposite personality of Steven. Let's just call this new guy Paul. Paul was fine. <laughs> Interestingly, he was from Serbia when it was part of Yugoslavia, but he lived in New York for a really long time. At first, he just seemed a bit out of it. Uh, I get it though, it was almost the end of the day, and god knows how many people he had seen come in and out. Afterwards, the usual spiel began of, you're gonna buy a car today, right? Or let me talk to my boss, especially after seeing the damage on my mom's car. Eventually, after a really long wait, and his boss came out, him and his boss came out, um, and said that the Audi had literally just been bought, but the guy he was on the phone with. This guy gave me weird vibes, so let's call him Mundungus. Like, Mundungus Fletcher from Harry Potter, the mole who looks like he stepped out of a 1920s gangster movie. And let me tell you, you should have seen the amount of guy, the amount, of, <laughs> the amount of gel this guy used. <laughs> For real. Anyways, Mundungus comes out, says the audio is taken, but he has plenty of stuff in that price range, Volvo and not Volvo, in the parking lot. And in the parking lot happened to be my mother's dream car. Let me tell you about this dream car. It is an Alfa Romeo Silvio. 
was an interior of handcrafted Italian leather, and this one had a Ferrari engine. My mother is a speed demon and literally would have abused the hell out of it. But anyways, story. Mondungus asks, are you interested? And of course my mother says, yes, I am interested. We go take a look and she's shell-shocked. It is so fantastic. And then the financial start. At this point, it was like five something, and she had promised me this would be quick. This was not quick. And we were actually there till about six o'clock. We were squished along a wall with a salesperson who didn't even get a desk to himself waiting, and then my mom got what seemed like a great deal. They were going to figure out the rest of the loan and work their magic. We thought we had it in the bag. They started figuring everything out, and Paul, the salesperson, made it seem like we were going to just buy the car. Eventually, we leave, hopeful that things were going to turn out. My mother has three kids, bought a house all by herself, and works a lot. Needless to say, the most her monthly payment could be, uh, to be normal, was about $600 max. The next day, my mom gets home from work, speaks to Mundungus, and he says that the payments were going to be $1,000 a month, after we had explicitly told him that wasn't possible. Dream car or not, my mother was not spending that much money in a car because she couldn't. We quickly came to the conclusion that he was warming us, hence why I referred to him as Mundungus. That was Saturday. When Sunday morning comes around, we get up, business as usual, and then we decide we are going to one more place. It's actually a place we'd been before, the Hyundai dealership, to go speak with Rodolfo. The night before, after my mother had, was wormed out of her dream car, we had gotten a text from Steven saying he had a great option for us, and guess what kind of car it was? Oh wait. That's right, it was a Hyundai. We took it as a sign that we should go back and see if they had any other options for us now that we had seen as much as we could possibly handle. We show up to the dealership around 1 o'clock, meet with Rodolfo, and by the hour, he showed us the car we would end up going home with that day, even though we weren't necessarily expecting it. <laughs> he had even said to us that sometimes he meets with a client and doesn't get them to buy a car and run their credit for a month. Um, after all this bullshit, it was nice to speak to a person who was there to help people and make their lives easier since, in his own words, everyone needs a car, there is no point in making things more difficult. We ended up with a Mazda, a Japanese make, SUV that was clean, comfortable, relatively new, 2021, and had everything my mother needed and wasn't worth a literal fortune. I figured I would kind of some things up here and tell you what I had learned from this experience. Firstly, cars are ridiculously expensive, and to the people who want to say that Gen Z is lazy because we can't buy them, I say to them, fuck off, because if you were my age right now, you would be broke as hell too. Secondly, I say that car salespeople are built different. Not always in a bad way though. If you look and do as much research in advance beforehand, you might find someone who is genuine and won't fuck around and therefore won't have to find out or just someone who gets it thirdly give yourself big breaks between seeing cars at different places because being at a dealership is exhausting even if you don't walk away with a car and it is best to go into everything with a clean slate and not annoyed and hungry and irritable and getting a migraine like me finally get a car that makes you happy but also meets all the criteria you need it to reach do not sacrifice on features you you might need for your health or your job also don't settle for a single price if you think something is a bit too high check if there are any other dealerships that have pre-owned versions of that car or go and go with whoever gives you the better number who gives you the better customer experience hopefully you get both of those things in one i also recommend to not go alone and pay your emotional support person with things they like for example i requested tiramisu from uncle giuseppe's an italian grocery store in new york and connecticut and jersey i think that has really good pastries and i am weak for pastries anyways that's all i have to say i'll see you tomorrow check out the playlist for more of me if you're interested peace out